Hi, my name is Bob Taper with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're gonna focus on iteration statements, specifically one type of iteration statement called a for next loop. Sometimes you're gonna to need to loop through, or rather iterate through a sequence of items and perform a series of checks to find a match. Actually, you're gonna do this a lot more than you might anticipate, a lot more than you might think given the small example I'm gonna use in this video. So while it might not seem all of that useful at first, trust me, you're gonna need this in your toolbox. So as you can see, I've already taken the liberty of creating a new project called Four Iterations. Take a moment, pause the video, catch up, create a new project called Four Iterations by going File, New Project, and then making sure that you've selected the console application uh, template in the New Project dialog. So while there's a little bit more to the syntax uh, than anything you've seen up until now, I'm betting that you'll be able to easily figure out what's going on once I start typing it in. If you ever forget this syntax, don't worry. Later, after we've struggled through writing it all by hand, I'll share with you a little secret that you can use to get it right 100% of the time. It's really easy. Okay, so let me go ahead and start typing in the example here. All right, so what do you think that this code does? It'll execute the nested block of code, in other words, whatever's between the for and the next, exactly 10 times. Each time an iteration is complete, the value of index is incremented by one. So then inside of the body of the, of the for next statement, we're merely printing out the current value of index to a console window. Let's see it in action. All right, so as we expected, we see one through 10 printed to a console window screen. Awesome. All right, so let's change this up just a little bit and demonstrate a few more features of the for next loop. All right, so I'm guessing you can figure out Whoops, now I'm guessing you can figure out what it is this code example is doing. Uh, if you anticipate it to merely print the words found seven to the screen, you'd be correct. But the most interesting thing about this example is how it modifies the code flow. So to better demonstrate this, I'm gonna put a breakpoint using the technique that we learned previously. I'm going to use the leftmost column and click next to line number eight to create a breakpoint. Then I'm gonna use the start debugging button on the toolbar. And you can see it pauses the line, the next line that'll be executed on line number eight. Now we can merely step through or rather step over each line of code. We can hold our cursor over the word index and you can see a little window pops open showing us the current value of index. Index is currently set to one. If we were to step through one more time and hit the next, now index will equal two. Notice off to the right hand side, if I can maneuver over there and click the little pin and pin down this value, you can see we get a little helper window off to the side of the code, which shows us the current value of index. So as we continue to move through, we can see when it changes. Notice that when it changes, index and the current value change to the color red, indicating that something just changed about this variable's value in the previous uh, line of code that was executed. When we move on to the next line of code, it turns back to black. Furthermore, we can get this type of feedback about the values of our variables using the debug menu, window submenu, locals. And what this will do is show us for any variable that's currently within scope in the local uh, procedure or method, it'll show us its value. So here we see automatically the value of index equals three. If we had any other variables defined, we'd see them listed here as well. I can even change the value to speed ahead here. I'm going to set the value to six and click the enter key on my keyboard to change it up. You can see that index has turned 
to uh, red indicating that something just changed about that. So I'm able to work outside of uh, the execution of code to modify the value variables. A pretty neat feature, especially as we get into debugging more complex applications. All right, so let's continue on. And when we hit index equals seven, now we would expect it to go to line number nine. So we're changing the flow of code by adding the if statement. Here we're merely printing the screen and then we're gonna hit the exit for statement which will notice what happens next. It breaks us completely out of the for next loop so we don't continue on to index equals eight, nine, or 10. Instead, we jump out of the for statement completely and go to the next line of code beyond that which is console.readline. Okay, so one or two last things here. I promised you a foolproof way to remember the syntax each and every time. So what I wanna do is just make some room for myself right before the console.read line, and I'm going to type in for tab tab, and what I've done is fired off a code snippet. And there are many different code snippets available to you within the code editor in Visual Basic, and this is just uh, a template that is pasted to your code editor with little replaceable bits. So you can see as I continue to use the tab key on my keyboard, I'm able to tab uh, through, for example, the variable that's created, the starting and ending value, and so on. So I may wanna change this for i equals five to seven, and then enter console.writeline value of i, and I'm going to just remove my breakpoint. You can see that there's still a little blue pin here. And what I wanna do is go to debug clear all data tips to get rid of that. And that was just because we pinned down that little helper window, that data tip off to the right hand side. So now we wanna focus on lines 15 through 18 and see what they produce. They produce the values five, six, and seven, great. Now just a few more things about this before we conclude. I can extend my for loop to step two values at a time, for example. So let me change this to 10. So five to 10, step two. Let's see what it produces. So it'll produce five, seven, and nine. It steps in increments of two. What if we wanted to step backwards from 10 to five, let's see what happens. Stepping, taking a negative one step. So we go 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. All right, so those are some variations on using the for loop. And so just to recap in this lesson, we learned how to use the for next iteration statement to loop through a code block a number of times until a particular set of criteria are satisfied. We demonstrated a simple condition in our code examples, but we can expand on this and we will in the next lesson. We looked at how to combine an if statement inside of our for next iteration and add a little bit of logic to evaluate certain conditions. We looked at how to use the exit for uh, statement to break out or jump out of a code block uh, within the for next iteration. We took a look at the practical use of some debugging tools within the IDE. We looked at how to step in multiple increments like increments of two or negative one to move through a sequence in a certain ordered way. And then we also looked at how to use code snippets to remind you of writing syntax that you'll sometimes forget. And I'll be using this quite a bit as we continue on the series of videos. Hope that was helpful. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.